Kyle Lowry returned to Toronto with a shorthanded Heat team, but left with a win, Miami's fourth in a row, and while Lowry was the big story early in the game, the buzz was all about Victor Oladipo scoring 21 points off the bench. Has he made a case to be a part of the rotation? We'll debate that and break down the win on today's episode of Locked on Heat. You are Locked on Heat, your daily Miami Heat podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Heat Nation. It's a Monday edition of Locked On Heat, your daily podcast covering all things Miami Heat. However, you may be listening or watching on YouTube, Odyssey, or on your favorite podcast app. Thank you so much for making us your first listen every day. I'm David Ramil, and with me, as always, is my co-host, Wes Goldberg. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Bet BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. The Heat went north of the border to Toronto. Marking Kyle Lowry's first game back versus the Raptors after a nine-year stint with the team. And the Heat were without Jimmy Butler, P.J. Tucker, and Dwayne Dedman, and even Eric Spolstra. But while Butler, Tucker, and Dedman were sitting out the second game of a back-to-back after a 127-109 victory over Chicago on Saturday, Coach Spo entered into the league's health and safety protocols and was unavailable. Chris Quinn took over as head coach for the team. The Raptors rolled out the star treatment for the best player in their franchise history highlighted by a great tribute video for Lowry. And at first, the new starting lineup, which included Caleb Martin and Markeith Morris, who had also been out of the lineup for the past three games, alongside Max Struess, they looked out of sorts. They were down 10 at halftime and shooting just 42% from the field. But they came out energized and focused in the second half, adjusting to the Raptors' quick offense and finding the rhythm of their own, shooting nearly 62% in the half, including 67% from three-point range. That's pretty good. To outscore the Raptors by 15 and get a really solid 114-109 to victory. The win keeps Miami in the first in the Eastern Conference, gives them a two-game lead over the Celtics. And with three games left in the regular season, the Heat's record stands at 51-28. and What a turnaround from where this team was just a week ago after four straight losses, now four straight wins, and even missing three key players against the Raptors. The rotations were crisp. Everyone knew their role, and Miami has found their identity is arguing, arguably excuse me, playing their best basketball of the season just at the right time, Wes. Yeah, Eric Reed on the broadcast called this an organizational win, and I thought that was a really good way to sum this one up. Uh, reminded me of December and January Miami Heat basketball, right? You know, you've got different guys playing different roles, different lineups, a bunch of guys out. You mentioned Eric Spolster's not even there on the sideline, uh, and they just got it done. And one of the stats that you didn't mention was 30 assists on 41 yeah. made field goals. And that's sort of been the common thread, right, since yeah. the the new rotations and during this four-game win streak that is obviously following up that four-game losing streak. Could not be more different uh, last week versus, or I guess two weeks ago versus right. this past week. So um, – the ball movement has been really crisp. I, I asked uh, Chris Quinn about that after the game, just like, yo, is this like, how much are you guys prioritizing this? And and he right. basically said, like, this that's what this team, this it's what this offense needs, especially on a that's night true. without Jimmy Butler, but even yeah. with Jimmy Butler, right? Like, that's what all of this stuff, the rotation changes, everything that we've been talking about over the last few days, it's all meant to increase the ball movement. The drive and kick game was sharp tonight. It's why they made so many threes, to your point. Um, it was just a really, really strong, solid effort and an impressive gutsy win for a Heat team that was down so many guys on a night that was really important for one of their best players. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Kyle Lowry, look, I, it was an emotional night for him. Uh, he had a presser, an unusual presser today. Uh, you know, Kyle, not a big fan of media, but he, you know, recognizing the importance uh, to him and to the fans and the organization going back yeah. to Toronto. This is his first time actually being able to play the Raptors this season. The Heat have played them twice before, twice or three times before, and he's missed all those games, mostly because he has missed some time due to injury and also personal reasons. Right. And he talked about that during his presser. So he had this afternoon presser in a suit, uh, looking very dapper. Wearing and his championship and ring. Wearing his championship ring. Which was enormous, and- by the way. Yeah. I don't know that I've ever seen anybody wear the 2019 championship ring. Um, maybe That's on Kawhi it doesn't look as big because his hands are so enormous. Right. It looks like a pinky ring on him. <laughs> that thing like was like three ring, Super Bowl yeah. rings. That was a, That's a great <laughs> ring. 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, it's, it's nice to be able to win a championship. Uh, so. I'm sure, I'm sure Mickey Harrison will, will figure something out this year when Miami wins it. But anyway, uh, uh, you know, Lowry just talking about the importance of the organization, how important the organization was for yes. him. Like, I mean, everybody's kind of forgotten now in the conversation about whether or not Kyle's a, a hall of famer, but he was basically a journeyman at that point. He had spent time with Memphis. Yeah. Houston couldn't really find his footing. Uh, you know, was a backup for most of his career. Came to Toronto and not quite sure what to do there. And he wound up turning it around into an incredible career. And, of course, yes. playing an instrumental role in helping to guide them to the uh, 2019 championship. And, it, as and it was an awesome tribute video. I, I do want to stay here for a little bit because I, I think there's a heat-related part of this. Um, okay. Awesome Setting tribute. the trend, right? Awesome tribute video. Um, by the way, shout out to the Raptors. They did. I love that it wasn't thank you, Kyle. It was welcome back, Kyle. I thought that that was yeah. really classy instead of just doing the, that thank you thing, like basically yeah. letting him know, like, this is, we understand that this is always your home or one of your yeah. homes, obviously, Philadelphia being his home home. But right. um, I, so that was cool. I couldn't help but watch guys like Tyler Hero, watch Kyle Lowry, res- watch that video. Kyle, also really cool. Kyle Lowry has two sons with him at center court yes. while they watched. I thought that was really neat. But, yeah. Um, you could just tell that this meant so much to Kyle Lowry. Max Struess, after the game, talked about the fact that w- they all knew it was a big deal. Like, Kyle Lowry just, like, openly talked, hey, this is going to be a big deal. And just right. so you know, this is going to be a really insane atmosphere because those people love me in Toronto, basically. <laughs> and he was right. It was an awesome atmosphere. And um, and, and I just I, – I couldn't help but watch Tyler Hero, watch Kyle Lowry kind of be celebrated in that way. And right. Chris Quinn said this after the game. He said, greatness inspires – greatness and yeah. i just wonder if you're tyler hero you're 22 years old you're in your third year with the, your only franchise you've ever been with uh right. or if you're bam out of bio in your fifth right. year right like whoever it might be and you're watching like how is that not inspirational how do you no, not want that you know there's 13, no doubt 14 about 15 years down the road and no we talk it. so much about what lowry means to this team from the outlist passes and pushing the pace and the organizational yeah. qualities that he brings and the culture and the championship experience and all of that of course is true and important but you also wonder what that could mean like that like being able to like kind of like what Dwayne Wade was for some of oh. those young players especially Bam yeah, talks yeah. about it all the time to this day and you wonder if Kyle Lowry can have a similar impact again Chris Quinn Greatness inspires greatness. And you just, you got to think if you're Tyler Hero, Bam Adebayo, or whoever, you're like, you know what? I want that to be me. I want an awesome tribute like video like that. I want the fans to remember me and to love me the way that these guys in Toronto love Kyle Lowry. Um, yeah. I wonder how much of an impact that had on those guys. Oh, I mean, don't wonder because, I mean, we we know it's fa- a huge, yeah. huge factor for them. I mean, Jimmy Butler isn't a member of the Miami Heat if he doesn't see their retirement process, the way Dwayne mm-hmm. was welcomed back by the organization, the way they devoted that whole season yeah. towards the last dance and gave him a three-day retirement and everything else. Like, seeing that was a huge influence because, obviously, Wade and Butler are incredible friends. That they, you know, they they became great friends during their stint together in Chicago. But, I mean, we know that it influences young players. They want to have a legacy. Like, for guys like Bam and Hero who are on the cr- cusp of stardom, uh, for them, yeah. it's all about being able to continue to build off that and establish that legacy. And to be able to do it with, uh, you know, not just Lowry, like to have a nine-year stint in Toronto, yes. but to see another guy like UD mean so much to the community, the organization, being their OG and everything else, and being, again, an instrumental voice in that locker room, that has to be an inspiration yes. for them as well. So even while he's not playing as much, he still inspires them to yeah. some degree. But, and, and, you uh, met, and you say the cusp of stardom there, and I just want to save you from the comments before. But what do you mean, Tyler Hero and Bam? No, there is a time-served quality to this, isn't there? And that's kind of the – that that is where that stardom can take you, or that time-served could take you to that level of stardom, especially – Right. Amongst a, a, a specific fan base, right? The way that Kyle yeah. Lowry has it. Um, and so Tyler Hero, Bam Adebayo, more than capable. We'll see where their careers take them. We have no idea. You know, it's the NBA. It changes every single day. But, um, yeah, has to be an inspiration to those guys. Well, I lost my camera here, but I'm back. back. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I'm back. I'm back. And you know what? Uh, the, the Heat were back. I, I think, well, we're kind of glossing over kind of lost in the moment of Kyle Lowry and everything else, but the heat looked incredible. I was really yeah. dubious uh, seeing this lineup beforehand, knowing that Caleb Martin 
who's been on and off with injury over the last couple of weeks, Markeith Morris, who hasn't played in a week, uh, having them in a starting lineup uh, alongside a guy like Max Drews, who's provided value, but is also, you know, he's not a great, de- great defensive player. So between Morris and uh, Struess, you're already losing something defensively. Uh, I, I think it's a, it was a concern of mine going into this. Uh, and, and you saw early on from the Toronto Raptors how energized they were, particularly Fred Van Vliet. He looked like yeah. he was on fire. He had like 20-something first half points. Yeah. Uh, and he was just – he looked like he was trying to prove something to his former mentor and still friend and Lowry. Uh, Absolutely. And, and he was all over they, him, defending him up yeah. the court and everything, just bothering him. I mean, you could tell there was something there. He wanted to bring a little but extra – yeah, for sure. But the heat rotations were fantastic. Uh, yes. You know, a great balance of everything that we've seen over the last few weeks. Again, like to your point, bringing out the very best of this team, passing the ball, sharing it, almost forty-three point attempts, which I know is a point that you've beleaguered for all season long. And and, and they're, they're right there. They were thirty-eight uh, three-point attempts tonight. So they they played more like the team that they're supposed to be, shooting the ball a lot, getting out in transition, creating great looks. Uh, and, and I think in the second half making incredible adjustments, particularly to the pace of play. I saw that first half, and Miami just looked sluggish. They weren't quite sure exactly how to move the ball, mm-hmm. where to go, and things like that. So it was a little weird. It had a weird yeah. feel at the start. Yeah. 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 And then in the second half, you see everybody outletting passes, not just Lowry, as he as often does, but also Oladipo and everybody else just looking to kick the ball ahead. Tyler Hero is really good. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Tyler finished with, what, like like nine assists or something on the night? Yeah, yeah. nine assists. Eight, uh, rebounds, eight assists. Eight. He almost yeah. had a triple-double. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Uh, great night for him. Uh, not just him, but everybody else. And we'll talk about who deserves credit in our next segment because so many players stepped up today in the absence of Jimmy Butler and others. So we'll give credit where credit is due. But before we do that, just a reminder that today's show is brought to you by Bilt Bar. Uh, you know, at this point, so many people trying to just eat right and stay healthy and, and find a way to balance their diet. It's not always easy. You know, you can grab fast food. It's just so much more convenient, especially as more and more people are going back to workspaces and things of that sort. It's kind of tricky to get back on schedule and to find that right balance. But Built Bar makes it so much easier because not only are they soft, easy to chew, 100% covered in chocolate and absolutely delicious, but they've got all the nutrients that you might be looking for that fit almost any, um, not almost any diet, whether it's keto, whether it's uh, vegan, whether, whatever you're looking for, you'll find it in a built bar and so many delicious flavors to choose from that you can't go wrong you can get a mixed box with all of your favorites get some for yourselves get some for co-workers friends and families believe me they're a hit with everybody so many great flavors to choose from low calorie high protein replace your candy bar with these without sacrificing any of the taste and best of all if you go to built.com and use the promo code lock 15 you get 15 percent off your order so use the promo code lock 15 for 15 percent off but only at built.com Thank you for making Locked On Heat your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast. Nightly recaps of every NBA game with analysis from our local experts. It's free. It's available wherever you get podcasts in a great way to catch up on the NBA action as the regular season comes to a close here and we get into the playoffs. But it is time to get into the kitchen and whip up some credit cookies. Yeah. David, a lot of credit cookies were given out lately. Uh, What are the cookies we are doing tonight? Well, you know what? I, I gave it uh, the bare minimum amount of thought, uh, as I usually do. No and, surprise and, and there. On, I can always count on and, you for that. In honor of the uh, the three-game road trip and flying back all the right. way from Toronto, the Heat are getting Biscoff cookies, which is a favorite of most airlines to give away yes. as the in-flight tr- uh, treat. That's that, uh, that waffle one, cookie. right? Yes, it's it's delicious. It's actually really, yes. really good. Yeah, you it's put them actually on the on the packaging of those things, the ones that come mm-hmm. on the plane. It actually tells yeah. you to put it – that's the one that you put over the cup of coffee, right, and it warms it up. It yeah. tells you to do that on the package. And it's I've done – I did that once, uh, and it softens it. Yeah, it softens it, obviously warms it up. Uh, delicious. So really yeah. good. You What's it called? Biscoff? It, Biscoff, yeah. Oh, All right, so. and this is, a, this is a little insider information too. Uh, my mom uh, turned me on to this years and years ago. I don't eat it anymore because that stuff is not great for you. It's not a bill bar, that's for sure. But Biscoff comes in like a cream, almost like a spread, kind of like even richer. Uh, what's the word? Oh, like a Nutella? Word? Yes, but even like it tastes like the cookie. Richer than Nutella? In, yeah, richer Hard than Nutella. Believe. Yeah, and, and cookie cream form. Like it tastes like the cookie wow. melted down into a spread that you can put on butter, on toast, or. And on you can a, purchase this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Huh. They got Biscoff cream. Yeah. Guess, All right. Well, Shout out Biscoff cream. All right. So we've got yeah. we've got 10 Biscoff biscuits that we want to give out. Uh, and we're going to start. Let's just 
uh, right off the bat with Kyle Lowry. It was his night, special night. Two Biscoff biscuits to Kyle Lowry for sure. We've already talked about him. 16 and 10 tonight. Uh, not only came out on a special day, uh, performed the way that we have been accustomed to see him uh, perform, especially during this uh, win streak here. Yeah. Uh, and he did it on an efficient – like this wasn't a night where he took 13, 14, 15 shots, only four of eight, right. only attempted eight shots, but again – Scored eight and got to the free throw line quite a bit, six or seven from the free he throw. He talked line, about that in a game. post game, a post game yeah. uh, winner circle. He talked to mm-hmm. Eric Reed and John Crotty, and he said, "Look, I, I recognize that later on in the second half, I didn't need to be as aggressive, right? And, and I, I recognize that it was more important about distributing the ball. Uh oh, camera problems continue to bug me <laughs> down here. Uh, well, I'll move on to uh, Max Struess. Max Struess two. Biscoff biscuits to Struess. We mentioned his big second half, 14 points in that huge third quarter. The third quarter that basically swung the game for the Heat. They outscored the Raptors uh, 34 to 23 in that period. Come back from 13 points down, outscore the Raptors in that period. All because, well, it was it was partly Max Struess who's getting two of these Biscoff biscuits, and also Tyler Hero who's getting another two of these Biscoff biscuits. And you know, Tyler Hero, we could talk about the scoring. We talk about Tyler Hero scoring all the time. He obviously had some yeah. really great, you know that that kind of fading away to his right three-pointer that he made out of the corner. Right. Uh, that was the other deep three away. that he me- made, the the, uh, the dunk that he had, all that stuff was great. I was actually really impressed with his playmaking. Yeah. I thought at first with Tyler, um, it was a little rough. And he actually finished with like eight turnovers, in the, not like eight turnovers, eight turnovers in the game and uh, to eight assists, which is not a great ratio. But most of those turnovers yeah. happened in the first half while most of the assists happened in the second half, right? And so uh, I thought he really kind of felt out the Raptors' defense and adjusted. And we have talked so much, and this is sort of buried under all the storylines that went on in this game, but we've talked so much about how Tyler Hero has had a problem with length, specifically with Toronto's length, right? Not the issue tonight. I know that he had the eight turnovers, but that was, to me, more of a symptom of what you were talking about earlier. It was just such kind of a weird, lazy kind of feel on the second night of a back-to-back on a Sunday game. But as the team picked up energy... A lot of that energy was being picked up because Tyler Hero was sort of the wind in the sails, him and Max Struess. And I was just really, really impressed with Tyler Hero's more organic type of playmaking off the bench tonight. Yeah, only one assist and three turnovers in that first half. So he wound up having seven assists to just five turnovers in the second half. Yeah. And look, credit to uh, you know, Toronto's defense. They're the long bodied without OG and none of today, but still playing a pretty good game. Very good defensive unit. Uh, and they were able to anticipate a lot of those passes. But I do like that point that you brought up about Tyler just – looking to get things going. His shot was certainly falling, but he also recognized the need to run, pick, and roll. When they were defending him well, when they were sending Pascal Siakam out of a big, yes. long you know, defender who can uh, cut off those passing lanes for him, he was finding other guys in transition, finding them in opportunities in the half-court sets, and he did a really, really good job of that. I know we didn't talk much about Max Strews, but I know we talked about this, uh, I want to say, like a couple weeks ago before the losing streak began because he had one sensational fourth quarter there. And we were talking about the most combustible player mm. on this Heat roster. Yeah. That second half, I, I think as good as Tyler has been, that second half really showed that Tyler can start. I mean, that, that Max can start off without even taking a field goal attempt in the first half and wound up having a monstrous game. Like he just was so dominant in that second half. Getting that shot, even had a dunk that he missed uh, that, that he was fouled. Got fouled, yeah. Yeah, but still, just incredible shooting from him. And you could tell, like, all of a sudden, yeah, you, you meant, I know it's kind of simplistic, you know, kind of the whole conversation on NBA Twitter about a hooper versus a baller or whatever you want to call it or a skilled player, but he's just a gamer. He seems like he's gamer. Just, when he takes it up to that level, he's ready for that opportunity. And tonight was another opportunity for him to showcase his skills. And he just brought it to the table in the second half. Gamer's the word we used after the Celtics game when he took that charge late in that fourth quarter, right? I mean, he is a gamer. Uh, I think Tyler Hero is a hooper. I think he qualifies as hooper. Um, hooper versus gamer. Okay, that's uh, another different, right? Yeah, it is. It is. It I is. can see what your point is. Uh, All Kyle right. Lowry would be a baller, I think. Sure, why not? Okay. Uh <laughs> Quick shout out to Bam Adebayo. Uh, you get one Biscoff biscuit. Um a lot, you know, six of twelve overall for him. Sixteen points, nine rebounds. Um, you know, he was a plus ten, which was mostly because of what he was able to do defensively, which was, you know, defensive player of the year quality defense as we were accustomed to seeing. But a huge yeah. offensive rebound with thirty three seconds left in the game too. Um, that really it didn't seal the win for the Heat. But had he not grabbed that, like just skied over like three or four different Raptors for a rebound, he had no business really getting. 
had he not yeah. gotten that rebound, who knows? Like that could it could have been a really bad loss for for the Heat tonight. Like that Absolutely, was certainly yeah. in the cards for them. So yeah, uh, he and had then, big plays there, big plays down the stretch, uh, just moving the ball and moving without the ball, getting yeah. his looks and, and and being aggressive against guys like Siakam and others, and, and taking his shots when they were available. Two Biscoff biscuits to Chris Quinn subbing in for Eric Spolstra. Which we, we should also note no reason to think that Spo is going to miss more games. Uh, I know it's just been a couple, but for two very different reasons. And, you know, going to Toronto, just different health and safety protocols. He's not expected to miss more time. So we should mention that in case people are wondering. But uh, Chris Quinn, I thought, did an awesome job. Got his first win as a head coach, right? Because he is, he one subbed one. in. Yeah. yeah, he filled in for that Brooklyn game. And obviously that didn't go the Heat's way. But um, so cool for him to get that win. Uh, I thought he managed the rotations really, really well tonight. Certainly better than he did against Brooklyn, even though they were a little overwhelmed against that Nets team. But um, yeah. You know, obviously you start with that with that starting lineup with Caleb Martin and Markeith Morris, but I thought he shifted the lineups well in the second half. It was leaning way into Tyler Hero, way into Victor Oladipo, who we'll talk about here in a minute, uh, because he was playing so well, and then limited the Omar Yurtsevin minutes basically to that first half, which I thought was the right call. Started playing Markeith at center and, and spaced out the lineups a little bit more as the three-point sh- shooting was getting going, uh, and then limited Duncan Robinson, who was just not having a great night on either end. Uh, yeah. and, and, and like I said, found the guys, you know, Max Struess has got it going. Let's lean into that, et cetera. Uh, I thought Chris Quinn did an awesome job just sort of maneuvering and, and managing the lineups. And then, um, Victor Oladipo, we don't have enough. I only have one more Biscoff biscuit, but he's going to get it. And if we had more, maybe, maybe we could steal some from the other flights. I don't know, but, um, he's definitely deserving of one. I know we're going to talk about him in the next segment, but. 21 points on 7-11 shooting, 6 of 9 from three-point range, including one bananas long 28-footer that he had no business taking, but he took it, and it went in. He had four assists, solid on defense. Chris Quinn shouted him out about uh, for his defense, said, hey, it's because of what he could do with that two-way impact that we're able to switch everything against a team like Toronto. Just uh, really, really impactful tonight, a plus five overall. A uh, really nice night from Oladipo. Yeah, Uh the shooting was spectacular. Uh, made a difference when Miami looked sluggish early on. Uh, he had some really big moments in the fourth quarter. I think he had 12, fourth quarter, uh, 12 points in the second half overall, nine in the fourth quarter of mm-hmm. his 21 points. Just great game from him. His best in a heat uniform. And so reminiscent of the all-star version of Victor Olotipo that so many people were expecting to see early on. It's just there's not enough to say about the Victor Olotipo that we saw tonight because certainly his best game in a heat uniform – and making a strong case on a night when no Jimmy yeah. Butler was there to have an increased role in the rotation, something mm. we'll debate in the next segment there. So stay tuned for that. But before we do that, just a reminder that betonline.net is your number one source for all of your betting needs and sporting info. Find all of the latest sports developments, including this week's Masters Championship odds, podcasts, and reviews for all the different leagues this season. Bet Online is your continued source. For all of your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores, I watched the final four games this Saturday, West. Let me tell you, I watched it with a friend of mine who is not a sports fan, but for some reason has been inspired by this NCAA tournament. He was so excited. I told him all about bet online. He likes the he likes the occasional gambling jaunts. You know, he, he's not uh, opposed to it. And I told him go to betonline.net. I gave him the promo code, and I told him you know, go on there, make take advantage of the, the opportunity. Uh, he's really excited about uh, placing. Hopefully, a bet. bet on North Carolina. Uh, well, he wasn't. He he gets emotionally <laughs> invested. He, he, I told I told he said he was going for Nova Duke. I said no, it's Kansas USC, and I was right. Even wow. though I don't really watch college basketball, I did predict correctly. But uh, make That's sure you head easy. to the website today, yeah, or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. Just a reminder that you can always reach us via email at locked on heat at gmail.com or via Twitter using the hashtag Ask Ali Heat. Be sure to please subscribe to the show on YouTube uh, or wherever you get podcasts. And always leave a review. We love getting feedback from yep. all of our listeners and fans. Thank you so much for always chiming in and sending questions. Uh, but one question I'm sure we'll be getting tomorrow in our comments is whether or not Oladipo has shown that he deserves more playing time. Because tonight, clearly, he was an impactful player. He looked the best he has. He looked healthy. He looked smooth. Uh, he looked decisive. He, you know, the shot at first you you, lose, you see him taking that three point shot. And you're saying to yourself, oh, maybe he's just being a little bit more passive, right? He's not aggressively ducking to the rim. He's not creating shot opportunities in the paint the way he has in the past. 
But then he starts mixing it up. He starts throwing some passes in there. And look, I texted you in the first half when I started seeing his energy level is kind of being a positive. And I said, oh, does, you know, does he get to start from now on? Is he going to be a player who can make a contribution? You're like, nah, not yet. But then by that second half, yeah. he kind of shifted a little bit. <laughs> you, saw, you saw after that dunk, after that three-point shot. Yeah. Like, he kind of – call me crazy, and I know it's not about reading body language, all that, but he kind of had a little swag to him, right? And, and A little F.U. attitude. Half, yeah, yeah, kind of like a little smirk on his face. Yeah, there, like you. Oh, you don't want to play me here. So this is what I could do, and because he, he knew he was feeling it. And yeah. you love the reaction that he was getting from the teammates too. I mean, PJ Tucker on the sideline was just going ape yeah. the entire time, and yeah. uh, really hyping up Victor Oladipo every time he made he was making threes and and, and dunking and all those things. But um, look, I get it. When Victor Oladipo plays like this, and when he's making six of nine three pointers or whatever, well. Yeah, six of nine from three-point range. And with the potential that he has uh, uh, as a defender, the two-way impact, you're like, why wouldn't you start him at the two-guard spot? Like, he could space the floor. Yeah, I guess. But he also hasn't played in a week. And it's – I don't – I guess part of the question was what kind of heights can Victor Oladipo reach as a player? So that was certainly part of it. The other big part of it was how often could he do that? How much can we see this Victor Oladipo? I'm not saying we can't. I'm just saying that question has not been answered because he hasn't played in a week until tonight. Right. So I I don't know. I is is I don't know where you fit him in. You're not gonna bench you still need, I think, one of Max Drews or Duncan Robinson. If Victor Oladipo sure. goes six of nine tonight, he's still not gonna be respected as a shooter the way that uh Duncan Robinson and Max Drews are. And that is almost more important than actually making the shots, is the spacing that they create. People are still going to go under on screens on Victor Oladipo and dare him to start making those shots. You don't go under on screens on Struis or Doug Robinson in the first quarter. You do against Victor Oladipo. And so you're not going to start him. Okay, well, then maybe you bring him off the bench. And now we're back into the conversation we had when Victor Oladipo was first getting back. Okay, great. Bring him off the bench. Who are you taking? Whose minutes are you taking? Well, okay. right now it's Gabe Vincent, Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson, and Dwayne Dedman off the bench when this team is healthy. So I guess there's an argument to be made. Like, if he's got the playmaking, everything going, and defensively in the shot, I guess he would take Gabe Vincent's minutes. But uh, it's still, to me, a little wait and see. What can he do playing multiple times, multiple games in a week? Can he keep? Yeah. Can he maintain this level of conditioning, that first step, and all that stuff? I don't know. Again, it's a question. I just don't know if the Heat have enough time to answer that question. And that's yeah. always been sort of the rub with this. Yeah. Uh, look, he, he's, you know, he's a, a guy with a lot of pride and has yeah. gone through a great deal of turmoil over the last few years. And he wanted the opportunity to go prove himself after a week of sitting out and, and being able to contribute, especially in a night with Jimmy Butler. And that's something you can't just disregard either. It's that with no Jimmy Butler in the lineup, you have to play somebody. And Oladipo has not a redundancy to Butler's game, but certainly there is a factor there where he's a guy who, yeah, he he likes to be able to get to the hoop. And certainly he was also spreading the floor, but he's also more of a catch and shoot player also. So at this point in his career, a guy who can rise up from three and feels comfortable doing so. And I think that's where he got a lot of those opportunities. Something that we've kind of, kind of glossed over in the whole Max Struess as a starter thing is that he's just, he's just better fit for this offense than Duncan Robinson is. You don't have to shift the offense. It's not, none of those, Rescreens with Bam, where the dribble handoffs and things of that sort, you don't have to you know, eat up five, six seconds of a shot clock possession just to be able to get Duncan a wide open look. With Max, he's either moving, cutting towards the rim, or he's uh, uh, open in the corner for a catch and shoot opportunities. And he's been so much better of a catch and shoot shooter than Duncan Robinson, whose numbers yes. have really trailed off in that regard. And I think that's something that's huge. And, and Oladipo being able to fill in that role to some capacity certainly helped him tonight. Uh, you know, with the, with guys like Jimmy, Kyle, even Bam to some degree, you're going to have that drive and kick. You're going to have that opportunity to spray it out to open shooters from the perimeter. you got to be able to knock those down. And that's where he got those wide open looks today. I don't know if he can share the floor with Jimmy Butler and be as effective. Right. Yeah. I mean, this is the whole deal. This is why they revamped the rotations is to get Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo in more space. And I right. know that Oladipo had a great game from three point range tonight, but he's not exactly the kind of player that you're thinking about when you're talking about putting rotations together to give those guys right. space. And the rotations are built around their top players. And right now, that's just not in the pecking order. It's not Victor Oladipo. I don't want yeah. this to come off as like anti Victor Oladipo. I would love for Victor Oladipo to play like this and have an opportunity sure. to prove that he could play like this every single night. Right. I, 
I'm just telling you guys what's going on. There's just there's three games left in the regular season. I don't and when all this and when this team is healthy again, you know, this coming week for these final three games. I, I don't know. I, we've already seen them make the decision that Victor Oladipo. Now, if we're going to zoom out, well, then there is th- this is a great game to have on the resume to say, you know what? I know that time sort of ran out on us this season, right. but there's still a reason to re-sign me this summer. And depending on what Victor Oladipo thinks of the Miami Heat organization and how mm. they've actually managed this behind the scenes, under right. like. Obviously, everybody into the media and public are saying the right things and doing the right things. And Victor Oladipo having a night like this is definitely really, you know, uh, optim- I- 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 encouraging. But yeah. depending on how they've massaged this whole situation behind the yeah. scenes, right. and hopefully did not turn Victor Oladipo away from the organization this summer, right. Right. we'll see. Not reporting anything, just asking the question here. If no. well, this is a good, yeah. but having a glimpse like this is like okay. This is a reason to maybe dip into the bird rights or whatever it's going right. to take to bring him back. This might be a reason to bring him back because if he can give us this next year, oh, we got we really have something then because next right. year we got we got another eighty two games to figure this out. Right, right, and a full off season of work at, with Victor yeah. at full strength and everything else. I mean, there's some he can unlock just another part of this offense that looks so oh, yeah. fluid tonight. So uh, I mean, it's a, a great point by you. Uh, Especially and, and if Tyler Hero ends up becoming the starter next year and you're looking for that kind of six man, maybe it could be yeah. Old Depot. I don't know. That's a good point. Uh, I mean, certainly would require a trade of at least a player probably to free up some salary. Sure. I, yeah. But, you know, that's something that the Heat will probably explore. Although, you know, there's some rumblings in Utah about a certain player that might become <laughs> available. I'm sure we'll talk about that at some point in the future. But for now, Miami looking impressive. Their fourth straight win after four straight losses, looking very much like the team that they were for most of the regular season when they were dominating uh, over teams. And, and this is not against inferior competition. They took on a very hot shooting, hot defending Boston Celtics team that's been very, very good. They beat a good Chicago team that's still yeah. kind of reeling, but still a very good playoff team. And they took on a feisty Toronto Raptors team with some. They had won five straight coming into this game. Yeah. So Miami turning things around. The Kings win. You know, again, we were kind of dismissive of the Kings win, although we saw some potential from the new lineup yeah. with Max Struess. But those next three games after the next three wins after that has really kind of gone a long way to showing that Miami might actually be fixed yeah. and, again, play their best. Nothing like a game against the Kings to get things right. Yeah, Tales absolutely. all the time. It's a good start. All right. Well, we'll wrap it up. And, of course, we'll have another episode tomorrow for you. So make sure you subscribe. But thank you so much for making Locked on Heat your first listen every day. Now make your second listen Locked on NBA. Locked on experts covering the biggest stories around the NBA every Monday through Friday in less than 30 minutes. It's free and available wherever you get podcasts. And, of course, sign up to our YouTube account as well. This is David Ramil signing off for now. Thanks so much for joining me, Wes. Wrap it up, B. Like and subscribe.